Good morning. I'm Alan Kay. Welcome to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Maple, Ontario. It is June 13, 2021. We welcome you all to come and worship with us today. And so I am now going to turn it over to Reverend Kathy Brownlee to lead us in worship. Good morning, everyone. It is a joy and a privilege to be with you this morning. And I can confirm today that I am in the bounds of the moderator of the General Assembly, Reverend Dr. Dan Scott of St. John's Church in Bradford was installed as moderator last Sunday afternoon. It is a beautiful June morning in Maple. There is cloud cover, but there are also sunny periods today. And it is a delight to lead in worship this morning. Our prayers and praises rise to you, O oh God. You search us and know us. You love us and claim us as your own. You bless us with your grace. This day is your gift to us. Let our worship be our gift to you. Our opening praise this morning is number 435 in the Blue Book of Praise, All Things Bright and Beautiful. morning I'm surrounded by an array of June flowers, orchids and peonies and lilacs, uh, a wonderful array of June flowers and our hymn speaks of all things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. Let us 
come before God as we pray. Let us pray. Creator God, we see your glory proclaimed in the skies above us and in the wonders of the world about us. Shower your grace upon us as we worship you. In every place we see your wondrous power. In the beauty of this day, in the sound of warm, refreshing rain, in the splendor of the sunset. But especially, O oh God, we see you and know you in Jesus Christ. Touch us, O oh God, this day where our need is greatest. To those who are feeling discouraged, give new hope. To those faced with failure and disappointment, give courage to start over again. To those faced with loss, help them to know your comfort. Mighty God, be with us in our worship and bless us. Hear us, O God, as we come confessing our failures. God of mercy, we confess that we stifle your spirit within us. You have sent the spirit of peace, but we have allowed our selfishness to cause division and disharmony. You have sent us the spirit of patience, but we have been worried and anxious when we have not seen immediate results from our efforts. You have sent us the spirit of gentleness, but we have been insensitive to the feelings of others. Lord, forgive us. Teach us how much we need the power of your spirit in our lives. Help us through the work of the Holy Spirit to be more like Jesus. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the good news for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have life everlasting. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Good morning, St. Andrew's youth. I hope that you are all doing well. I know that you're coming to the end of your school year. It has been a difficult and challenging year for you with in-person classes and then online classes and back and forth. I know it's been a difficult and challenging year for you. You will be thinking now about some of the things that you're planning for your summer vacation, hoping that you will have a better summer than last year with less restrictions, less public health restrictions, and more opportunities for you to do things. I would like you to consider doing something this summer that will make a difference to someone's life. One day, the Bible tells us, when Jesus was teaching a large crowd 
out in the countryside, it was late and the crowd was hungry. And a boy, a lad came and he offered all that he had. He offered his small lunch of five loaves and two fish. Jesus took that small lunch, five loaves and two fish that the boy offered to share. He took them, he gave thanks and he blessed them and that food was enough to feed all the hungry people that were there and more. So we can make a difference in someone's life. And I'd like you to think about a way that you can make a difference in someone's life over the summer vacation. May God be with you as you prepare for your summer vacation. Let us pray. Loving God, you love us and care for us. Be with these students as they complete their school year. During the sum, their summer vacation, help them to find ways to use their gifts to make a difference. Watch over Sawyer, Jack, Jessica, Joshua, Shane, Jonathan, and James, and other youth who may be worshiping with us today. Watch over them and keep them safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Prayer for illumination. Let us pray. Loving God, attend to us as we open your word. May our hearts and spirits listen for, you, for your will for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first scripture reading is from Psalm 8. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim in the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The next reading is from Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 to 11. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one of mind. Do nothing out of, this, out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others, value others above yourselves, not looking, into your, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Jesus Christ, who being in very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, 
being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the father. The next reading is from Matthew chapter 11, verse 25 to 30. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our way. Help us to be still and to listen and to rise up and obey. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. A mother had promised to take her daughter shopping after work. She had skipped her lunch break in order to be able to leave her work early. The mall was busier than she had expected it to be. She was tired and she was hungry. Her feet hurt and she was more than a little irritable. As they were leaving the last store uh, in preparation for going home, she turned to her daughter and said, did you see the nasty look that the manager gave to me? Her daughter hesitated and then said, he didn't give it to you, mom. You had it when you went into the store. In most cases, the way that we act affects the way the reactions of others around us. Certainly this has been our experience during the pandemic. Our home seemed to be an adequate size, but suddenly it got crowded because parents were working from home, children and youth were doing online courses from home, each one needing their own appropriate workspace and their own quiet time. Needless to say, our bubble has become tense at times. How we act affects the reactions of those around us. If we approach others with a negative attitude, then we 
may well reap a negative attitude in response. But if we approach others with a positive attitude in a positive way, then it's more likely that we will get a positive response. The Apostle Paul, as we know, made missionary journeys around the Mediterranean. In those missionary journeys, Paul established churches on the north side of the Mediterranean Sea. He established a number of churches. After he established a church and left that particular area to go on to establish a church in another area, Paul wrote letters, letters to offer guidance and advice to the churches, the young churches that he had already established. This morning in our reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians, Paul gives the Christians at Philippi this instruction. Have the same attitude that Christ had. What were some of the qualities that Jesus had that the Apostle Paul is referring to here? The first quality that comes to my mind is that Jesus was fair in his approach to others. You will recall that Jesus came to the defense of his disciples when they were falsely accused of something, but Jesus was also not has, did not hesitate to reprimand his disciples when he saw and detected that they, that some of their shortcomings. Jesus certainly knew when to reprimand and when to support. Jesus' disciples, when Jesus was out on the lake in a boat with his disciples, a storm came up and the disciples panicked. Jesus reprimanded his disciples for their lack of faith. Why are you afraid, he calls to them. Why are you afraid? Do you not have faith? Jesus reprimanded two of his disciples, James and John, when they came to Jesus looking for the places of honor in his kingdom. Jesus reminded them that true greatness means being willing to serve others. Jesus was fair in his approach to others. We also know that Jesus had compassion for others. Jesus interrupted what he was doing, even though it might be something very important that he was doing, Jesus interrupted what he was doing in order to reach out to others and in their need. He reached out to others that other people would not even notice or would have ignored. 
We're told in the Gospels that one day while Jesus was leaving Jericho, a great crowd followed him from Jericho, and along the roadside was a blind beggar named Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus began to call out to Jesus for help. But those in the crowd told Bartimaeus to be quiet. But Bartimaeus continued to cry out louder than ever, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped. He interrupted his journey. He stopped, went to Bartimaeus, and offered Bartimaeus healing. On another occasion, while Jesus was passing through Jericho, a despised tax collector named Zacchaeus decided that he wanted to see Jesus. So he went up into a sycamore tree to see Jesus as he passed by. But Jesus noticed Zacchaeus. Jesus interrupted his journey again. He calls out to Zacchaeus to come down from the sycamore tree because he wants to come to his house. And we're told that very day, salvation came to Zacchaeus' house. Compassion was certainly one of the qualities that Jesus demonstrated. A third quality that we know that Jesus demonstrated in abundance was humility. In our reading from Matthew's Gospel this morning, Jesus describes himself as being gentle and humble in heart. Certainly, Jesus demonstrated Humility. Humility was one of the qualities that Jesus demonstrated. You will recall that on the night when Jesus was betrayed, when his disciples gathered with him in the upper room in, uh, to celebrate the Passover meal, Jesus is the one who stoops down to wash his disciples' feet. Jesus stoops down as a servant would do, and he washes his disciples' feet. Jesus did this to demonstrate that he had come not to be served, but to serve, and that his disciples were fought to follow his example and to be humble in the way that they went about their ministry. Mother Teresa of Calcutta once wrote that Humility is the mother of all virtues, purity, purity, charity, and obedience. She lived out what she said by reaching out to the castaways of society who were left in the streets to die. Jesus said that he came to serve and not to be served. We know that Jesus lived that out in the course of his ministry. 
Jesus was humble. Another quality that's evident in Jesus is that Jesus was discerning. Jesus was able to discern what was important and what was not as important. Amid all the busyness of Jesus' ministry, all the demands that were laid upon him, he was able to discern what was important and what was not as important. Recognizing that the cross was before him, Jesus was able to discern what should take priority. Jesus did not hesitate to rebuke his opponents, but we also notice that he did not deliberately antagonize his opponents. We also see Jesus' discern, ability to discern in his teaching ministry. Jesus was discerning in the way that he taught the crowds, in the way that he approached the crowds, in the way that he spoke about ordinary things, things that they would be able to relate to. Things like a mustard seed, a lamp, sheep, a banquet, things like wheat and lilies in the field. All of these would be familiar to his hearers. We know that there is also a stern side to Jesus. Jesus could be indignant at times. He was indignant when he overturned the tables of the money changers in the temple. Jesus was indignant when he discovered that James and John were arguing about who would get the best place in the kingdom. Jesus could be indignant at times, but he was never vindictive. He was never vindictive in his approach to others. When two of his disciples called upon him to bring down fire on an inhospitable village, Jesus refused to do so. And even on the cross, Jesus cried out, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. The Apostle Paul instructs the Christians at Philippi, and he also instructs us today to have the same attitude that Christ had. Be fair, be compassionate, be hum humble, be discerning, stand for what you believe. God, help us to demonstrate the attitude of Jesus in our lives so that Jesus may be seen in us day by day. Let us pray. Lord, Jesus Christ, 
You came not to be served, but to serve. Come to us in our darkness and show us the attitude that you had. Come to us and renew us with your high calling that we may love and serve you. In your name and for your sake, we pray. Amen. Our praise hymn is number 644 in the Blue Book of Praise. May the mind of Christ my Savior. before God with our prayers of thanksgiving and our prayers for others. In our prayers for others today, we're going to remember Jim and Joyce House as they celebrate a milestone anniversary, their 60th wedding anniversary this week. And we are remembering uh, the Hayashi family as they remember and give thanks for a loving wife and mother who passed away on June 14, 2020. And we're remembering in our prayers today, Dr. Jackie's aunt, Ivory, who lives in India and who is very sick at this time. We will remember Dr. Jackie's Aunt Ivory in our prayers today. Let us pray.
Mighty God, we offer thanks for the beauty of nature, for roses and lilac bushes, for hydrangea in bloom, for forests, lakes, and fields, for sunshine and refreshing rain. We thank you for eyes to see this loveliness. We thank you for leisure time to pause and appreciate the wonders of the world around us. We give thanks, O oh God, for your many blessings, for the lives that touch ours, for family and for friends, for those who have left their gentle imprint upon us. Lord God, you have given us knowledge of yourself through Jesus. We remember Jesus' identity with ordinary people and the delight that he took in the little things around him. We remember how he chose the way of sacrificial love rather than the way of personal convenience. We remember in our prayers today, the G7 summit being held in Cornwall, England to discuss pandemic recovery. We ask that there would be harmony and cooperation among the G7 leaders. We pray for the people of India as the COVID crisis continues there. We pray in particular for Ivory, Dr. Jackie's aunt who's very sick. We pray, Lord, that you would place your healing hand upon her and restore her to health and well being. May hospitals in India receive the medical equipment and supplies that they require to treat the many who are suffering. We pray for the seriously injured nine year old son and family and friends of the victims of the senseless act of terror and violence in London, Ontario. We remember the families of all victims of violence and gun violence. Lord God, deliver us from evil. We pray for indigenous families. We offer prayers for healing in the communities and families of all who experience residential schools. We ask for comfort for all those who are grieving and strength for all to pursue reconciliation. We pray for the safety of those whose work is dangerous, police officers, rescue workers, firefighters, members of our armed forces. We remember in prayer, medical officers of health, those who work in public health, frontline workers, Doctors and nurses who work in ICU, give them the strength and the energy that they need to meet the demands that are being made upon them day by day. We pray for those who are ill, for COVID patients in hospital and recovering at home. We name them now in the silence.
Lord Jesus, you are the great physician. Be present to them and restore them. We pray for the family, the Hayashi family, as they remember and give thanks for a beloved wife and a loving mother and grandmother. Be with them as they remember and give thanks and comfort them in the hope of the gospel. We remember those who are celebrating this week. We remember Jim and Joyce House as they mark a wonderful milestone, their 60th wedding anniversary. We pray, Lord, that it would be a wonderful day for them, a day of sharing, a day of, me of sharing memories, a day of being with family, either by technology or in person, as they celebrate this wonderful milestone. We ask that you would continue to bless them with good health and well-being. As the moderator of the General Assembly, Reverend Dr. Dan Scott, assumes his responsibilities, we pray that you would be with him as he guides and give him guidance as he uh, carries out the uh, tasks and responsibilities as moderator of the General Assembly. God, in order to combat any surge in COVID cases, help us to keep up our guard as businesses and restaurants and retail reopen. Almighty God, we give thanks for our prayer answered, for our problem solved, for hope awakened, for faith made stronger, for grace bestowed. In Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our, our Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, power and, and the glory, glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue in our worship as we bring our tithes and our offerings. God loves a cheerful giver. Donations can be provided by online going to candahelps.org go to candahelps.org slash en slash dn slash five six four nine five or donations can be delivered or mailed to saint andrew's presbyterian church 9860 keel street vaughn ontario l6a 3y4 well everyone's today's uh, mission moment you know, with the pandemic having going on and ongoing, we forget about some of the other things that have happened. And this was an interesting one because to remind me and you think, wow, that was only last August. And that was the massive explosion that struck the city of Beirut in August, 2020. 
It left many people injured and many homes damaged. Presbyterian World Service and Development, PWSMD, responded to the devastating effects by meeting the needs of vulnerable people in Lebanon. Families received essential supplies, such as food and hygiene items, to sustain them as they started to rebuild. Additionally, PWSND assisted in restoring homes and schools and provided water and sanitation kits to family, as well as school kids, kits uh, to uh, children. And so just to remind you about uh, those, uh, the good work that uh, Presbyterian World Service and Development does throughout the world, not only for ongoing needs, but also in these emergent situations. And you can assist when you fill in your envelope. There are those other two boxes. So you can use those to direct your gifts uh, to that kind of work. Or alternatively, if you are giving online, there is a pull down menu where you can select options for how you wish to give. And I thank you all for all the giving that you do and the gifts that you give to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church here in Maple to allow us to continue uh, to bring the word of God to you and others. Our next announcement is, I'm forgetting my, where I am here, there we go, is our Zoom Bible study. So that is ongoing. Uh, so it's being led by our own Fabrizio Piazza. It's on Thursdays at 7.30 p.m. So again, it'll be this Thursday. The link each week is the exact same link. So if you've gotten one of my emails, you know how to connect. You don't have to wait for me to, like this week, only remember at 7.15 <laughs> to send out the link. Uh, you have it from this, last week, you have it for next week. And uh, so I do encourage you all to join. Uh, last week's uh, was on Where is the Devil? Uh, and uh, and uh, it was a very interesting study in terms of that. So uh, just as uh, Reverend Brownlee talked about how is, uh, is how to see Jesus within us, uh, well, unfortunately, the devil is among us as well. So I do encourage you to join up for the Bible studies. No preparation required, no studying uh, just get on, get on, learn a little something, throw in your two cents, and everybody is better for it. Uh, the next is uh, just a little moment. Uh, so as uh, Reverend Brownlee mentioned, uh, the General Assembly occurred for the Presbyterian Church in Canada occurred this week. Uh, Reverend, the Reverend Dr. Daniel Scott from our sister, sister church, St. John's in Bradford, just up the Highway 400 from us, uh, was installed as the moderator. The um, uh, thing to remember about the Presbyterian Church is we don't have a leader per se. There's no popes or archbishops or anything like that. We have a moderator, but that moderator acts more like a speaker of, a, of an assembly. They don't, they're not the prime minister. They're not the president. Uh, they are a speaker. They help uh, can, you know, uh, direct the, uh, the, the proceedings, um, but they don't, you know, make pronouncements on things. Um, the Presbyterian model is a very democratic model working right from the, each congregation up to their session, to the presbyteries, synods, and eventually to the General Assembly. And uh, so it was very interesting to be a part of it this year. Of course, it was a, a General Assembly that was like none other before because it was done online. Uh, pre last year's was canceled because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And so this year, there were two years worth of work to get done in uh, three and a half uh, short days. And uh, I, Dr. Scott has to be commended for uh, getting us through all of that. Uh, so I do commend him and maintaining calm composure, despite the very, you know, very difficult issues that were being uh, dealt with by the church, um, particularly with respect to the items of human sexuality that came back for, had previously been decided upon, but, but that decision was only temporary because it had to be ratified and through that ratification process uh, did occur. But also even just things like during while we're having the General Assembly, the tax in London that uh, that uh, Reverend Brownlee mentioned, um, and you know the Assembly having to come to terms with issues such as that, and uh, 
and a hand was uh, extended in that regard and prayers made. So it was a very in, uh, interesting, um, and I, I must say, I many times I felt like pulling my little, little hair I have left out because <laughs> um, uh, there were over 200 things being voted upon in that short time. And uh, and you, when you look at the preparation, if I printed that out, I'm sure the book would have been this thick. Uh, again, thankfully, things were done online, and we saved a lot of trees that way as well. Uh, but if you would like to go to presbyterian.ca slash GA2021, you can access all those kind of acts and proceedings. There are also some videos there uh, with some of the guest speakers. We had a guest speaker from uh, the Reformed Church of America. We had a guest speaker from, uh, um, uh, from, uh, in, from Malawi. Um, and also speaking about how uh, Presbyterian Church in Canada has assisted them, and, uh, and an interfaith um, with a speaker from the Islamic um, uh, faith uh, speaking as well. And so those videos are available on that website, and all the other acts and proceedings that went on are available should you ever uh, be wish to go through that. Uh, I got to say, if, yeah, if you got insomnia, there's a great spot to go and read some of those reports. Uh, but we did get through it. And there are a lot of important decisions that get made. Uh, and, uh, and I am glad to have been able to be part of it. And now, everyone, let me turn back to Reverend Brownlee. Let us dedicate our offerings. Let us pray. Gracious God, we dedicate these offerings to the service of your church and to the extension of your kingdom. May your blessing be upon these gifts and upon each giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our concluding hymn is number 332, O Lord my God, or how great thou art.
I want to thank our reader this morning and to thank the team who have been here consistently, who have uh, dedicated themselves to the live streaming of this service, Alan and Dr. Jackie and Valerie, who've been here Sunday by Sunday, uh, facilitating the live streaming of this service from St. Andrews in Maple, so that through technology, we would be able to worship God together. I wish and pray that each of you would have a very pleasant and a safe summer season. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, both now and always. Amen.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you, to shine upon you and be gracious, and be gracious unto you. Thank you very much. Again, I would like to extend great thanks to Reverend Kathy Brownlee for being with us. Uh, she'll be back in September, and we look forward to seeing her again. Uh, Robert Hayashi will be here next week. We look forward to seeing you. Uh, give you thanks from, from the team here. We had Chanel Prasad doing our reading today. So wonderful to see her and uh, to be able to get to, to see some other faces that I know that you all have been missing over the pandemic. And, uh, and of course, Dr. Jackie Perry at Gupta here on the soundboard and also helping with the flowers and Valerie Ramwa helping with the flowers and the present wonderful presentation for you. I'm Alan Kay. God bless you all, and uh, I hope you have a wonderful week. Those who are listening live, please stick around for a time of fellowship.